Welcome to Let's Talk Geek episode 80. In this episode, Super Earth Habitable Planet Found 22 Light Years Away. What's to do with MTN's flat rate smartphone packages and the Nokia Lumia 800? Thanks for listening. Welcome to episode 79.5 of Let's Talk Geek. Curious why it's a fraction? You'll have to sit through the whole intro and find out at the end of it. Right, Hi. Sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, Luke, you don't know yet, but uh, we've got a new introductionary method. I should have briefed you on this before we started the show. I begin, and then we'll cycle around and you introduce yourself. Get it? Got it? Good. All That's right. not so difficult. No. I'm Jan. I'm Johan. I'm Gareth. I'm Luke. Excellent. So we've got two guests with us today, being <laughs> Luke and Gareth. Uh, Gareth's been on the show before as a regular guest and a mixer, but you're a guest today. Yay! Cool. <laughs> Luke's been on the show twice before, Huzzah. but he's hardly a veteran. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> All right. So um, events coming up. Anything interesting? Actually, nothing I know about. All right. Check uh, out. Sorry, it's quiet at the moment. Yeah. We'll Beginning of the year jitters, man. There was, there was when, a whole lot of stuff. When's MWC starting? March? Um, yeah, I don't know. Mobile World Congress is at the end of the month. Okay. Runs end of February to into, into March. March. I think they're waiting but, for the March. But paycheck. I don't think that should go in star dates because it's in Barcelona. Yeah. Um, Doesn't and really the, affect us, no. Yeah, <laughs> and the, the, what is happening, if I remember correctly, there's a story in my gaming about tryouts for some gaming league. Um, sponsored by the, the Mind Sports. Some other sponsors. No, no, no. Mind, <laughs> we're not sponsored by, but run by Mind Sports. Um, so okay. it's going to be official and there'll probably be Springbok colors involved and all kinds of cool stuff. I'm sure this stuff will pick up from the end of this month when people got their second paycheck for the year. <laughs> because that first paycheck doesn't go very far. No, that first paycheck goes to debt. <laughs> it goes to Christmas. So I'm sure from, from the end of this month, things will start picking up and we'll start adding it to start dates again. Excellent. All right, so uh, that's events. I'm actually just loading this my gaming page because I'm curious about this mind sports thing. I should have thought about that. Okay, first topic, Lake Vostok. Who knows what that is? No idea. All right, what to who? It's a uh, <laughs> no, it's a what? It's hey. this, it's this uh, <laughs> underground lake um, underneath Antarctica, um, and uh, it's been this this great secret thing that scientists have been trying to unlock. And they've been drilling towards it for some time now. And then I think in 2008 or something, they had to stop suddenly because there was this big outcry from people going, hang on a second, you're about to breach an ecosystem that has not been exposed to our atmosphere in millennia. Um, if you do that, you could A, ruin that ecosystem and B, die from an explosion from, <laughs> from gas suddenly coming How through the hole How did they even that know that that ecosystem was down there? I, Sonar or radar or something okay, fancy. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't remember the By details accident. now. <laughs> no, not quite. Maybe it's just the mother Grundy's going. There might be things there. Don't do anything. No, no, no. It's okay. uh, no, no, no. There's definitely. Uh, they they don't know what is down there, but the, you know there are theories. So it that, could be like micro yeah, bacterial stuff. Okay, whoa, whoa. This thing is like thirteen thousand feet below the Great Antarctica ice sheet. Thirteen thousand feet down. Yes. Yep. No wonder we haven't explored Like three kilometers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and even now, it's not like they, they took a backhoe loader and dug their way down. Um, like, this is precision equipment. And so, from what I understand, what they're going to do is they're going to sample from the ecosystem first. Just let stuff come out slowly, rather than letting us touch it kind of thing. So, the idea is to be able to measure, to see what's going on. Because, I mean, all these hypotheses, you'll only be able to prove once you're down there and you can, and you can figure out what's going on down there. Um, so will it explode if you dig it open? Who knows? But I don't want to try because then you've ruined the whole experiment. So, and a big ecosystem. Yeah. Anyway, so there was a big scare because apparently um, the, they had lost contact with the scientists doing the drilling for five days. Whoops. But they are Russians. No, they laugh at the cold with the vodka. Um, <laughs> they walk, uh, yeah. uh, most, they get drunk. Mostly Russians. No, 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 no. They were, they, they, they just because of the the way this this works, they they do go off grid. Uh, yeah, they, and again. they nipped home to get some more vodka. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but they came back online and said, they "Hey guys, we're, we're almost back. there," and that was big excitement. Don't so, spit in my drink. <laughs> yeah, avoid the hole, please. <laughs> and I think while we're on the topic of uh, alien ecosystems, let's actually bring the story up of the super Earth that was discovered 22 light years away in oh, yeah. the Scorpius 
Um, it's a lot closer than the other one. Yeah, um, the the, the um, guy that Scientific American uh, interviewed said that this is basically a next door neighbor. His, his name is uh, Voigt, if you're American. Vogt, if you're German, I guess. <laughs> um, and um, and yeah, I mean this is this is actually very close. Apparently, there's only like a hundred stars that are closer than this one, and it's in the habitable zone. It's a super Earth because it's bigger than Earth. Um, 4.5 times as massive as Earth, Earth, apparently. So it's like Krypton, really. Superman could come from there. We I have think. found Krypton. Yeah. That's Fantastic. A, yeah, a bit okay. of a stretch. Um, <laughs> so it didn't explode. What now? <laughs> we haven't been there. What? No. <laughs> Let's, moving right along. <laughs> it might still explode. Yeah. It because we'll be. only see any explosion 22 years later. I'm sure you'd see evidence of it exploding before then, because oh, well, well, no, the light from an explosion yeah, has to reach you, us. That takes 22 years. You would notice expansion in the star before yeah, that happened. 22 I'm, years later. Yeah, but it could be happening now. Yeah. So okay. it could have exploded already. I think we're we'll talking past one another, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so we won't be able be. to. Yeah. We, we won't know. We won't know until it's happened. Happened. What? Yeah. It's like seeing into the past, time traveling. Anyway. <laughs> so we've still got, we're still talking about light. Um, they have possibly figured out a way to make hard drives go faster. So um, the idea is much uh, normal hard drives, magnetic hard drives, mm -hmm. um, is to heat them with a laser and uh, flipping the bits that way. But um, they paint them red. <laughs> no. For anyone wondering, that's a uh, Warhammer reference. <laughs> Yes, you, the speed of red. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one face palming. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's interesting because this is something that they didn't think uh, that was possible. And uh, it turns out that it is. We'll, we'll see you know, whether they, they're able to, to actually pull it off uh -huh. and how much these hard drives are going to cost. Because instead of the normal head that you're riding with now, oh, you're, whoa, whoa. you're shooting it with a laser. I mean, I thought the move was to go to solid state. Now, so there's still work being done in... Magnetic storage, yeah. Magnetic storage is just so much cheaper. So yeah, it's yeah, going to be a lot more cheaper, cheaper and, and you can get lots. No, I'm sorry, but solid state will become cheaper when it becomes popular. The old thing, the moment it's no, on, it's and it's been getting cheaper. And it's, it's also affordable. as the manufacturing process moves along. So as that becomes more sophisticated, and, 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 and more traditionally, they more. What, how they always got gains out of hard drives was they just found new, unique ways of layering the way they write the disk. So mm -hmm. they would find like, oh. You know, there's multiple magnetic states that you can have on a hard drive spot. So you could ha you could have, you know, one spot on the hard drive that has uh, six magnetic states on it. Okay. So you know, so that's the kind of stuff they normally get up to. So quicker, it's cheaper, faster. Just amazing. Faster. It, it, no? that there's still technology running. On yeah, there. yeah, absolutely. And and the thing is, you you've got to keep in mind that it takes a while for the technology to to sort of die out. Even even old, you know, tape sequential tape backups. You can still popular. get that tapes, so that's and and the reason is just mass storage. It's yeah. always it's all the older technology survives because it offered a, a larger storage space um, at at a cheaper well, cost. Well, it's good for backups. So it's sequential, which is a pain, um, but it really again, doesn't take that long. You'll never have to go to your backup. Exactly for <laughs> backups, it's not so bad. Now, if you've got to back up everything, no. restore everything anyway. Then oh, it's wow. less than four hours. So how how long is long for you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. But, um, but then I also want to say, terabytes of data every second. Okay, the biggest magnetic drive at the moment is two teras. So, um, drive red in two seconds. Google Dude, will be God. happy. I'd be happy. I would also be happy because then it would also you'd boot. prove that your <laughs> SSD is slower. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just, yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and, and the thing is, though, it, it might actually end up being more expensive than SSD because of the laser tech that goes into it. So well, doesn't that also introduce like more moving parts? Isn't there more failure points and hard drives that need additional you. things? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so you're going to have to uh, build uh, safety. I mean, already, like laptops nowadays that, that have me a mechanical storage have special sensors and whatever built into it so that free fall. You drop yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Like the laptops we use at work. Quite irritating sometimes, but yes. it works. Toshiba's. Mm. It works. Up, up with his message. Your hard drive has been switched off because of detective movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get me started on that <laughs> flipping message. <laughs> There's a little tick box that says, go away. No, I eventually, I eventually got rid of Windows and that solved that problem. Uh, okay. <laughs> that usually would. All right, so um, 
moving right on from there to newer technology. <laughs> 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 well, I guess that's pretty spanking new, but, but like new, new technology. Raspberry Pi um, has a launch date. The little... Again, I so want like five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who wants to handle Raspberry Pi? Anybody? <laughs> no. All right. So I'll, I'll handle <laughs> Raspberry Pi. I think I forgot about it. Yeah. yeah. So Raspberry Pi is a, is a little computer, essentially. So um, if I'm not mistaken, it's built on Arduino. Um, no. Not. It's okay. a separate project. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So separate project to Arduino. Um, what makes it interesting is that it's supposed to be this massive expans uh, expandable platform. Okay. So you sh you, you're supposed to be able to build whatever little daughter boards that you can for this for this platform, uh, you know, as many as you like, um, and doing anything that you wanted to do. Similar to Arduino. Similar to. It just it lacks that open hardware aspect that Arduino uh, has. Yes. yes yeah. So, um, I mean, the best use case I could come up with for Raspberry Pi was to build your own uh, media center, maybe. Because um, it's really freaking cheap. And then all you would need additionally is like a, a, a hard drive. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so th their little um, uh, boilerplate is an ARM GNU Linux box for $25. It's supposed to be like a really cheap computer. It's a torrent box. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it has a, it has a manufacturing date. So they're, they're supposed to receive the first stock of their boards um, in, at the end of the month. So of this month? Yep. yep. That's not bad. February 20th according to the article. Yeah. There's also a data sheet up on the site. We should probably start pasting links into IRC so you guys can follow along. Let me do that. Okay. Um, then, uh, we can't show YouTube videos in the, in the stream anymore since we upgraded with Blaster, so, um, which is unfortunate. Because right. Stuart, who was a host um, right, in the beginning. right in the beginning of Let's Talk Geek. He's, he's uh, since moved to Cape Town. He forwarded a link through for um, a, uh, showing QuadroCop. So go check that out. It'll be in the show notes. I think I've seen that. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. so what this shows is uh, quadrocopters swarming. So they show they build a little quadrocopter, it does its thing, and then they show that it can do maneuvers through obstacles, the whole swarm. So you've got, uh, like, I think a swarm of 16. Yeah. And then they go through a hoop in groups of four in order to maneuver through the Formation hoop. flying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're doing this autonomously. Correct. Good grief. Very, very cool. That's so pretty formation very nice. flying yeah. autonomously. I love me some robots. By the way, I'm just going to go on record that this is a big mistake and we are building Skynet. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> no, we've discussed this before. But it is so the awesome. The singularity is coming closer, it's man. Getting there. I mean, it's getting there. Google is building a car that's driving itself. We're building copters that can fly themselves. And uh, we'll, we'll get to some more interesting things, I think, uh, I think later. We just need self-coding programs, and you complete the set. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm telling you it's I'm getting there. <laughs> now, the last topic of the evening, I think, ties into this nicely. We're, gonna, yeah. we're, we're, uh, we're, we're going the wrong way, man. <laughs> the, the, the humanist movement should start about now because nah. uh, things are going all mechanical. So um, get out the tinfoil hats. Um, there's reports that Amazon is launching its own boutique retail store in Seattle near its Why headquarters. Why do you want tinfoil hats? Well, I think this is awesome. Really? I've uh, got some of the what world-shifting products out there and they're going to put it in a store. Yep, but this isn't what people don't... Like, people are talking about the Amazon Kindle and the, and the Kindle Fire and all that stuff. People have forgotten that... And a they bunch have of others, furniture? They have yes. furniture. It doesn't... Basic searches, you have to go... You have to go digging hard to find the... Screw the channel, essentially. Wow. But it makes oh, them the sound time. like they could do that. But already I was departed on a channel involved with a key. But there are plenty of channels involved in the What separates them from being so... Walmart still sources products from somewhere else. They don't manufacture their own products and sell them as well. Which uh, they, okay, they okay, might. Okay. I mean, there might be Walmart branded stuff, like you pick and pay branded stuff. Sounds but, like Apple. But yes, yes. Exactly. Uh, I was about no. to say that. iTunes. Yeah. Exactly. No, no, exactly Apple like Store. Apple. And, and, and interesting in this article, the, the person mentions this. They're like people were <laughs> largely overlooking Apple products, mm. so they put down their own stores. Architecture. No, but. no, but. Just go inside and sit in their furniture and has patents on staircase designs and all kinds of interesting things. They have some really interesting work with glass as well. Yeah. 
Anyway, if, if you look at the news offices, they're using some of that awesome tech. It's an interesting thing. Some, some, Someone who's not of the United States, I'm looking at this and going, what's going to be left for our distribution networks down here? Uh, will they all just get bought out by the guys like Amazon, Walmart? Um, I, will get eventually bought by App? And He's then hoping. eventually all that money and profit <laughs> flows back to the United States? Okay. I'm wondering about these things. Well, if, those pro all those products you mentioned now is exactly how it's happening in any case. If they do get bought out here, then they have to have those physical stores here. Yes. So that, that money jobs, has to... There'll be Actually jobs, get but into the, the country. profits do not go to, an, to a South African corporation, if you get what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, I They get might get saying. paid to South African individuals who own shares, mm. but yeah. anyway. <laughs> anyway, so we'll cross that bridge when it gets there. Anyway, exciting news this week, and finally I think people will be able to join in the conversation. Chrome for Android beta launched, or is Hooray! that Chrome beta Hooray! for Android? I got hauled over the calls earlier today. It's like, it's Chrome beta for Android. Android is not in beta. And I'm going, why do we even include it? the word beta anymore? I mean, if the long-standing <laughs> Google joke is that everything is going to be in beta, why bother mentioning there's, it? I think for Gmail, there's even uh, a Labs a app to put the beta tag back on the Google. <laughs> put it back those, in beta. To put it that back there I for like. the people who really want their Google Mail to still be in beta. I approve. <laughs> okay, quickly, what is Chrome for Android going to mean? Why do I want, I've already got a browser. What well, you have mean? a browser, but you don't have Chrome. So it's not using the Chromium, uh, it's not based on the Chromium project at all. It doesn't use the rendering engine in Chrome. Uh, so all of those things are going to be merged. So are, there still, are, there, are your extensions and stuff <coughs> possibly going to work now? Not yet, no. Uh, I'm hoping that they're working on that. They've worked a bit, uh, a lot on the interface um, to make it more Chromey. Yes, so, so a, a couple of interesting things they do. I don't know if you can see um, I don't know if you can see, and I can't even see the preview. It's lagging so bad. Um, so it's you can, clean. You can probably see it better if you just go and view the, use, the usage videos from Google. Now, you switch between tabs by swiping on the screen, uh, which is an interesting which addition. Didn't happen. Did it even do that? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There, there what, is what, say beta. Yes. What I did notice about the swiping is it only works one way. So you can only go to the next tab. You can't go to a previous tab. Oh, I tab. see. I see. It doesn't loop around. So I need to yes. swipe that way now. Did it do it? Yes, yes, it did. Okay, there we go. All right. So, sorry. I can't see the preview because um, our streaming application is lagging so badly. Um, but then there's also a button at the top which shows you all your tabs. And those are kind of arranged in a card fashion. So, kind of like uh, WebOS, which we never had in South Africa, but which you can see videos of. Uh, and then you can <laughs> swipe left and right to get rid of those cards or those tabs. Oops, I just noticed something. Sorry. <laughs> But I, 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 <laughs> I assume <laughs> that it like syncs with all of your other PC related yes. Chrome stuff. And that's one of the, oh, okay. the, so that's the, one of the really cool features. Your bookmark sync, which is available in the current Android ice cream sandwich browser. Um, and your tabs have the ability to sort of sync across. You can access your tabs from your other machines. Very nice. Thing. So you can, there, there's a way, I, I can't remember the exact so steps now, but I think it's being replaced with. It's, Chrome to Chrome. it's it's yes, um, <laughs> yeah. but so it's here you live. Go. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know if you can see any of this on the on the Sorry. screen, but I'm going to try. So I've just tapped in the top left corner. Oh, yeah, in the top right corner, there's a there's a drop down. It's yeah. your new right click. Click there, and you go other devices, and then it brings up a list of other devices. And the tabs open on and those And the tabs. Devices. So you'll see there. It says my MacBook Pro. Don't judge me. <laughs> and um, and then the tabs open on there. And yes, his Chrome really is that full. <laughs> okay. You've got to okay. clean okay. out okay. the okay. stuff here. Yeah. So that's very nice. Mm. Okay. Hopefully they'll get extensions and maybe even apps working across devices. Well, the apps, apps could be which, exciting. Apps which are, which sorry, could raise the whole question between native apps and web apps. Yeah. Again. Apps, yeah, thank you. Apps are already web-based. So which native apps are we actually, have you actually got in, on the browser? The well, browser. No, uh, <laughs> na <laughs> native client doesn't work. Uh, or so then Google Docs will finally be able to work properly. Uh, okay, but now, take a question. Point for me. How do I now get that? You, Excellent question. You don't. It's, it's only available for, ice cream, for ice cream sandwich. Which, as far as I'm aware, unless the Transformer Prime is in South Africa, which I haven't seen any news for. Not yet. Um, <laughs> there are no official ice cream sandwich devices in South Africa. And other than that... So why are we talking about this? 
other than that, <laughs> niche case, and this niche is a case. Show. it gets better. <laughs> other than that, it's also not even available in South Africa. It's not on the official release list. So However, even if you case, do have something case. like my, my Nexus S, which I had to import at great cost, no, not really, from, from the US, which has ICS on it officially, um, I can't download it from the market. So I had to get it off of, oh, can't get it off mega upload, but there was another link. So there, there was XDA a link. Developer, XDA developers, or point. there was a, a thread on Reddit. That's where I actually got it. Okay. I just asked quickly on Reddit. Five minutes later, some dude had the APK posted. So officially you can't install it? No, no not in South yet. Africa yet. However, yet. however I, was, um, given, I was given quick and succinct comment, and we, and we ran an article about this this morning, from Google saying that South Africa is in fact on the list of countries that will receive the will officially receive this, yes, um, and it's just going to take some time. There's there's a rollout, but I think I mean there's no real reason for them to launch in South Africa until the Galaxy Nexus launches yeah, uh, or until the Nexus S gets ICS. ICS. But I, I still want to know what the rationale is behind having an app that is released in certain regions first. I, I don't understand that either. Especially something like Chrome. Yes, I mean, it's what, a browser. I, I, I get would, why do they don't release. Navigation. Yeah, but navigation. Okay, navigation, that's a different story. They need to actually make sure that things are kind of working right and it's not going to steer you I'll into ask a Ask Luke how easy it is to build navigation into maps. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> you just need the layers, really. I mean, really? The, the road layers, that's it. You're yeah, done. but I mean, then you need to go and put in those nodes manually. Okay, and you sure. Need to put in There's the a lot of cleanup that you have to do, but <laughs> uh, the point is it's easy. <laughs> sure, it's, it's, but it's grunt work. You have to yeah. employ a bunch yes. of monkeys to. The monkeys must go and sit. And then, yeah, yeah. you know, with other things Are like music. Maps? I am involved with people who build <laughs> who maps. Build maps. Yes. So you just called yourself a monkey. <laughs> I am a monkey. <laughs> a I'm a monkey. coding monkey. And yes. in any case. So, yes, for Chrome, there's really no reason that I think any of us around this table can think of why it's not just releasing globally. Unless, okay. It's a beta. Yeah, may, maybe it's like that with um, new updates from Google. So, new Android updates. They also roll out in phases. And it's not region locked, but, you know, you, you find some people here, some people there, and it's just kind of random. That oh, they load, spritz load it around. Balancing? Could be load balancing, could also be making sure that it's working correctly in different regions with different languages and I don't know, all sorts of Actually, wonderful Actually, localization settings. would make sense, I would think. So, yeah. Seriously, just release it in English everywhere. I, please, okay. I don't get it. Anyway. Now, on, the, on the same subject, how many ICS custom ROMs are out? Uh, I haven't I'm done a done count. I haven't done a count either. See, um, the the there's Siren an Siren Mod 9, uh, I think, is at least an alpha. There was, been th an there was an early ages. alpha build for, yeah. Oh yeah, maybe it's in beta by now. Um, I haven't looked. Okay. But for Nexus, for the Nexus S and for the Galaxy Nexus, I think it was out within days already. So it's running. It's, it's coming. It's, it's out coming. in the wild. It's, it's coming. coming. Yeah. Before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some way and, to and run. I'm sure for That's still many months away. And I'm sure away. for the Galaxy range of devices, so Samsung's devices, there should be a ROM by now. So moving along. Yes. Oh, and uh, moving uh, I Nexus, but uh, there would be too much Android all at once. Tell us about the phone. This is the Lumia 800. Single core, one point, I'll be lying, 1.2 or 1.5 gigahertz. Yeah. I'll bring up my spreadsheet. Yes, keep please talking. do. Running Windows. Running Windows Phone 7. Okay, with that funny interface. Right. Metro. Yes, with Metro. Metro interface. Oh, yeah, it's okay. switched off now so that it doesn't interfere with anything. Uh, it's, it, it, on, the ex, uh, on the outside, it looks a lot like the N9. Does it come with that plastic cover? Is yes, part of the yes that's actually part, no, 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 no. It's part, of the, part of the box. It's part of your whole deal. So it comes off um, okay. quite difficult. Do you have more colors in there? No, you don't mm -hmm. have to take it off. Eh. Cool. There we go. Uh, comes in a couple more colors. Uh, there's a black one that I know of. And That's the most sane color that they have then, because yes, it, it comes in like, like it comes in a bunch of and and magenta, yeah, pink for crying out loud. Is there a yellow? Question, yellow? Question, question: Is there a white one? <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no. White one is launching in February, though. I just saw so the pressure. How are going to do that? Yeah. Okay, they're so they're just going off to go white off. shell. Uh, uh, what do you call yeah. this Mac color? This uh, is silver, my no, friend. No, man. <laughs> the, the iPhone yes. white. What do they call yeah, Ivory. That, that, oh, there we go. Ivory. Hideous. Such a naff name. And what's the experience like? Windows Phone overall is pretty good, but I, I'm not really seeing the difference between Nokia, uh, Windows Phone on a Nokia, and Windows Phone on any other Windows Phone device. Um, in my case, that would be a couple of HTCs and the Samsung Omnia 7. 
Uh, from the ones I've reviewed, the Samsung Omnia 7 was the best up until now in terms of Windows phone devices. And I, I don't Still know. Still a Zeus lens? Uh, yes. Uh, I think it might be the same one as on the N9. I'll, I'll have to dig in and make entirely sure because the body is so similar to it. Um, but the internals aren't. Well, no you need a lot more to run Windows. So Sorry? You need a, not, a lot more to run Windows. A lot more resources to yeah. run Windows. Well, Windows Phone 7, the, the thing that they've done there is they've standardized what internals you need. Okay. Uh, there's a gig of RAM in there. Now, there's I mean, some compared storage. to any Android phone, this thing has got a lot of hardware buttons. Yes, and the problem that I have with it is that all of those hardware buttons are on the one side. They're all on the right-hand side. From the top, you have your volume rockers, mm -hmm. then your power button, and then a camera button. And the second problem I have with them, button, if you push on that round knob, you'll see it flicks open. Uh, yeah. And that... No, like, uh, yeah. place to break so, so hold that up yeah. to the camera. Um, we said this with a Nokia N9 review as well. That is a fantastic like thing to break off. That's the, probably the flimsiest part of the construction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's unfortunate, um, but understandable. You want the, the whole exterior to be USB charge. Yeah, that's what you just opened there. Okay, and then okay. Uh, one speaker on the bottom. Yeah, one speaker on the bottom. And otherwise, it plays music. And it rings. Yeah, it does. It has uh, some special Nokia apps on it as well. Uh, Nokia Maps, Nokia Music. problem that I'm having with Nokia Music is even though you can log into your Avi account mm -hmm. and it gives you the amount of credit that you have in your account, you can't actually download songs that you have previously bought. That's quite lame. Which is kind of silly. Yes. So even if I go specifically to the album, there's no um, things you have purchased list that I can see anyway. Uh, Why don't you come back about music download? Yes. Okay. So even if I go to a specific album or a specific song that I've bought in Avi and that I've downloaded, I have it on my computer, it still tells me that I owe it money. I have to pay for it. And I'm not sure if I have to pay for it again because I don't want to pay for the same song twice. So I haven't tested that. Maybe oh. you should just download it to your machine and then from there to the phone. Here's an excellent yes. question from IRC. Can you make calls with it? <laughs> <laughs> I believe you can. <laughs> Why ask? Does it ring? Yeah, yeah. It rings. <laughs> it plays all sorts of fancy tunes. Microsoft seems to like uh, xylophones with Windows <laughs> Phone. I've, I've only noticed that recently, but all of their tunes are xylophones. Xylophones. Buy high pitch. Can we hear it for? High pitch? No, it can be low pitch as well. It's just all the same instrument. I, it's I must, kind of boring. I must chime in that I think, I think Metro is really slick. Um, Metro from, from the time I've from the times I've yes. used it, and it's all the thing that I love about it is it's always that slick. Yes, I don't think out of all the operating systems I've used, iOS, Android, Windows Phone Seven, a little bit of BlackBerry. I think Windows Phone is the one that lags the least. Interesting, because they use the hardware that I have the most gripes with. So for those <laughs> who haven't sat in on one of my rants, don't worry. Um, I Here won't comes start the now. Patented young rant. Um, but they use um, score. Um, Snapdragon, Scorpion, Scorpion, yeah, Scorpion yeah. Snapdragon socks. I think that's with because Adreno, that's possibly, uh, yeah, the Adreno 205 Adreno, GPU. Yeah. I think that's also possibly because of Microsoft saying this is the hardware that Windows Phone will run on. Because if you look at the N9, it used different, uh, different hardware. I think it used uh, an SGX um, 500 series uh, uh, no. GPU. The, the Lumia no. 800, what no. I've got here, is the a one. N, the N9. Oh, the N9. If you look at the N9. Yes, so correct. they changed the internals between the N9 and the Lumia 800. Yes, the N9 ran on a 1 gigahertz TIO map with the PowerVR SGX 530 GPU. Yeah, 530 is a little bit old, so they did yeah, yeah. So died. the Lumia runs Snapdragon with Adreno 205. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, the, the, the Adreno itself is also a bit disappointing. 205, not a 220. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, sorry, but sorry, it doesn't sorry. lag. It but do it, they've, they've done such a good job with it, it really is. And, and maybe that was a good call from Microsoft's part. So, you know, with a, with a more open uh, approach, you, you kind of have to support as many hardware vendors as possible. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft were able to go, we are designing for that and making sure we run slick as hell on, on that. that. So it's sort of like the best of both Android and iOS. Yes, and that's It sounds very them. Apple of them, actually, because... Mm. They, they have some aspects there, but the thing that sets them apart from Apple is they don't do the hardware. Yes. So they, get, they, they ask Samsung and HTC and now Nokia, which is a really big partner but of theirs, I mean, to make hardware for them. Now with Nokia, they're basically, they're basically chosen a premier partner. Yes. They're like, Nokia, you get special privileges. So, so in the coming months, it'll be really interesting to see if any of the other hardware vendors are going to double down on Android or continue making 
a couple, you know, one or yeah. two Windows Phone phones. The, the thing is, you have to diversify. And the, the one in the, in the pound seats at the moment are, is a manufacturer like Samsung, who not Maybe only they... has Android and Windows Phone, they've got their own OS, which yes. they're merging into Tizen. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking too much about mobile and we still need to and, get to the Galaxy Nexus. And then uh, instead of going with Windows Phone, maybe they'll ditch that and go with something like WebOS, seeing as that's been open sourced. Yeah. I'll do that. WebOS is sexy. I would do that. Just because it's open source, then it makes me want to look at it even more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, HP. Sucking. <laughs> so. Shame. <laughs> Moving along <laughs> to the phone that I love. And before we move along oh. to the phone that I love, I wanted to ask you about Zoom versus the Nokia software. Isn't that confusing as hell? Do you it use Zoom or do you use do, Nokia do you software? Use, uh, also Bing Maps or do you use Nokia Maps? I, I think just out of principle, I'd go for Nokia Maps and I also know that Nokia Maps is generally but, but for excellent. But your, for your PC sync, because for Wi-Fi sync to work with a Windows phone device, you need Zoom running on a Windows PC. Yeah. So... Which is terrible for me because I dual boot and my default boot is Ubuntu. Why do these guys still do a custom application so that you can get music onto your phone? Um, the reason Rat. is, and the guys for the guy from Android actually explained this beautifully. You've got a single partition on, oh, on these devices yeah. now. Okay, this is going to get complicated. Stay with me. <laughs> All right, so basically the way Android used to work, right, is they would give you two partitions. One system partition and one non-system partition. User partition, Then when you plug, the, you plug it in via USB, that user partition becomes like a mass storage device. Like you plug yeah, it in yeah. a normal flash So drive, you right? can mount that. But as soon as you mount it, it becomes completely unusable to the phone itself. Yes. Yeah. So right. now with the Galaxy Nexus, they've done away with that. So they only have one partition and it is available to everything for everything. You load your music, your apps, everything on one partition. Um, Actually, uh, I want to chime in. It's the same with tablets. Yeah, well, so the, the transformer, same, that yeah. guy as well, they all do the same one thing. Partition. They have one partition, yeah. but that's and you can the use MFT that for comes in. The, the MTP. Yes. MTP. Now, MTP on Windows, <laughs> MTP on nice. Windows is natively supported. Now it's on my, because it's a Microsoft yeah. protocol. So now on, on Mac, I had to download a separate third-party app I, in order to I, move can stuff. Can I give you my Windows 7 as <laughs> How's it on Ubuntu? You say you've got to jump through hoops to get MTP um, to work. No, well, there is a, a, a thing that you can install. I, I want to call it a module, but I feel that that's the wrong term. So there, there is something you can install to get MTP working, but then you have to jump through a couple of hoops okay. to actually get it to auto mount. Let's, let's go your, back two steps your to your question. All right. I don't yes. actually on here. I mean, I got, you've got other ways to do it. I can upload it through Dropbox. Yes. Okay. Is it the same with the Nokia device? If, I've, if you put MP3 files on there through another way, not using Zoom, is it going to play it? I don't even know if that's because possible. Because you can't even do that on but a bloody iPhone product. Yeah, you have you to. You have to have you're using YouTube, iTunes. Uh, iTunes. Yes. And that's where my problem is. So now suddenly, at least with an with, with Android device walking around, I've got another memory stick. Yes. I can plug it into your notebook. Not with this one. Files. Not with this one. The, yeah, Unless that one is dependent on the machine, whether it supports MTP or not. Yes. Okay, so, so anything forward, Windows 7 and going to have that problem. Everything will have to have MTP. Not necessarily. Uh, what they've said, they did it with this one. And they did it, uh, and it's the same with the SD card, because, okay, it gets confusing. As you saw, you have two separate partitions. So people start complaining about, oh, but I can't use all this extra space that's available on it just to install and these things. Okay, okay, so there's that. And then with the SD card, they said it gets confusing with the interface. It does. So because now I've suddenly, seen that, yes. now suddenly uh, a developer has to take into account where is something going to be stored. Will it be on the SD card? Will it be on that? Now you have to take into account uh, that there won't be an SD okay. card in the device itself. And they're trying to limit things like file explorers. So in, uh, I know in Windows, you look at it a little bit squiff and a <laughs> file explorer pops up and you have to click around everywhere looking for the file. And if you click on it the wrong way, oh, no, wait, that's Mac. <laughs> <laughs> well, Very well nice. Done. Well done. Yeah. Well done. So okay. they're, they're trying to limit things that confuse okay. people. Then, okay, that's fine. So let's not plug it into anything. Let's use it as it is. But yes. at least I can use other things to get the media on yeah i don't have to go through that damn software personally yes. if i have to install a flicking sync tool I, it pisses me off just there because i don't want that i just want to plug it in put some stuff on and go that's why you have said device and that's why i'm that's, asking that's Are why that thing on windows you won't notice on ubuntu obviously you will because you have to install the module okay that's and fine on right. mac uh you have to install the, the tool which is kind of irritating all right Fair enough. Cool. All right. The other phone that I wanted to talk about was the Galaxy Nexus, but I still have this for a while, so uh, we're not going to get to everything. And I think we've already bored everybody who's not interested in looking just about and talking just about cell phones. So this will be next week. If you want to like hear me rant, <laughs> it won't be just me. Give um, him another and, week so you can yeah. figure out why. It's and maybe again. maybe we'll invite Khaled back on again because he reviewed this for my broadband, so it'll be good to have him on to just pelt him with questions. It's awesome. That's the Android device <laughs> you want to buy. <laughs> wow. All right. So, 
<laughs> um, moving right along. Now, an interesting thing um, that happened this week um, or in the last week is uh, we got our hands on a fiber map um, oh, yeah. for, for Telcom's terrestrial fiber, fiber network. Not just Telcom, though. Um, no, well, all the others are readily available. Yes. Okay. If you wanted broadband infracos, you could just go to their website. If you wanted Neotels, you just had to ask. <laughs> if you wanted Dark Fiber Africa, you just had to call. Um, and they'll happily tell you where they've got. And uh, they, yeah, yeah. So, but um, Telcom's, and it's not Steve's song and his After Fiber project in Telcom. Telcom, which eventually got sorted out, and Telcom gave him the map. And so through Steve's song, we got the map. If you're confused about what I'm talking about now, you don't watch us enough, um, <laughs> you can go check out our previous episodes on, on, they, the, on this whole saga. Can they maybe just Google Steve's song? They will, and that will be the easiest back. way. Awesome. Oh, Very nice. Right. <laughs> so, come to the point. Yes. Right. I've noticed something. Go. Yes. <laughs> All right. No, well, go, go, for go, it. go for it. What have you yeah. noticed? So, um, Johan has the map open in front of him for those just looking at the audio. It looks like a web of fiber across South Africa. It's actually truly impressive. And this is Can just somebody telcoms. lay this map over the major rail railroad lines. That'd be nice. Major railways, and major roads. Major roads would help a lot. Railway. Yeah. And then maybe just a lot put of spoonet rails. Put Putting dots. Fiber next to them. No, Squirtnet, okay. uh, the whole of that Transnet network, that went to Broadband Infraco. Infraco. It's not Telcom. Because a lot of these lines look typically how you would... Yeah, they all run... They all I mean, run look at this one running from uh, uh, past Durban. Yeah, I a think lot of them you, run along the same route. If you overlay all of them, you'll see that they There's all run along overlap. very similar routes. I would bet so that these would the match now. like power infrastructure as well. ESCOM. Yeah. yeah, it might. So now what's... Oh, what's that little one doing there? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. What's, I mean, what town is that? Sorry, I mean, I'll be back. A, it's, it's the middle of, it's a little piece of, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's very interesting. Just a little strip. There's a little yeah, strip in the you, middle of nowhere. Look at anyway. Northern, what? Northern Cape. That's, That's like Uppington-ish, maybe. Northern Cape. Is Kimberley. that one actually going into Namibia? Yes, there's one going <laughs> to Namibia, there's one going to Lesotho. Apparently these follow Swaziland. major oh. roads, not the railroads. Okay, okay. okay comment from the forum, uh, okay. from, uh, from IRC. Oh, okay. now, now what's interesting, uh, the, now what, well, the reason I brought this up and the reason I wrote the article is because we have a severe problem in South Africa when it comes to uh, you know, broadband pricing. Everybody's complaining about the high price of broadband. It's not available to the lowest income user groups, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, and one of the bottlenecks is the fact that we actually pay more to move our data from the landing stations at the ocean, where the undersea cables like Seacom and stuff come in, and Telcom's own uh, SAT3 and SAFE cables, and Easy have not, has now landed, and the WAX cable that'll come soon. Um, moving from there to, say, Johannesburg costs you more than, than going from the landing station at, say, Azerfontein or Mutanzini to London. It's cheaper to route traffic internationally than it is to route traffic locally, is basically the complaint from industry. Do they industry. have a why, or is this just a mystic thing? That no, no, happens? no, it's not a mystic thing. This is what you pay for for transit from Telcom. Okay. And it's not, um, no, that uh, that's sucks. what we know, okay, so no. um, for, for a fact. The other guys might be just as expensive, um, or they just don't have the, and, and I think they just plain don't have the coverage. So if you look at Telcom's network, I mean, uh, managing this thing must be hair-raising, A, um, and, and B, you, they have to deal with problems like cable theft, which causes damage. Half of their fiber breakage incidents, uh, or almost half of the fiber breakage incidents, is because of like somebody either thinking it was copper or trying to dig out copper and damaging the fiber in the process. Yes. Um, More face, face palming. Face palming. Yeah. Yes. So, so, I mean, we, we do have challenges in South Africa, though not that unique. Um, apparently, British Telecom in the United Kingdom have got like professionals, people with purpose-built trucks to steal copper cable out of the, out of the, the uh, under, under city stuff. So that's just, impressive. <laughs> they just park there and they steal that's, the anyway. That's going out with a mission. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, anyway, so, um, what was impressive about this was this finally, because we had the stats, you know, some of the guys were talking about they've got 5,000 kilometers worth of cable or 8,000 kilometers worth of cable, and they're putting in 4,000 kilometers worth of cable more. And everyone's Telcom going has, has 144,000 <laughs> kilometers of terrestrial cable, and this is what it looks like. 
So if you're interested, wow. you can just go and check this article. It's like, a mess. It was a massive geekasm for me to see this amount of fiber. And I think once this goes on Steve Song's After Fiber map, it'll show that South Africa is not quite as dark as, as people thought it was. So this is a... Like, and this not is as dark, just but unfortunately, Talcom is the one with all the light switches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next step is figuring out why terrestrial backhaul is so expensive. And I, I'm sure this is going to come out when we start talking about all the local loop and bundling and, and all. And, and when, two. And when um, uh, it costs us, so probably local loop and bundling less, but when it costs us, starts talking about getting um, uh, IPC, that is IP Connect, that's Telcom's ADSL pro wholesale product, yes. um, the only one for now, mm. uh, when they start talking about uh, uh, how. Uh, sorry, lost my train of thought there. Um, when, the, when they start talking about how to decrease those prices because industry has been complaining that IPC is overpriced. Cool. Um, I want to know about this data. You're not going to skip the next one. No, I won't. <laughs> okay. I want to hear about this. I've heard rumors. <clears throat> about about oh. MTN. And, okay, so yes. there is a bit a lot of news. MTN uh, has come out with, uh, oh, has confirmed uh, smartphone, new smartphone data deals. Vodacom has launched a uh, data special for contract and top of customers. And um, we've got comment from Vodacom on how they're dealing with their BA, BIS abuse problem. I'm going to, I think because we're running low on time, we're just going to talk about the MTN thing because that is interesting. The reason that is interesting is because BlackBerry Internet Service in South Africa has been a major selling point of BlackBerry because it's 60 Rand and you've got as much internet on your device as you want as long as you don't like try to download 300 gigs of movies with it. Um, uh -huh. so, <laughs> so that's where the BlackBerry abuse comes in, by the way. You can go and check that out. Yeah. People have been, BIS was never designed for that. It was never intended to allow that kind of uh, usage. Um, but people have naturally found a way around that because we're South Africans. We're going to find a way to maximize. Don't tell me it's only happening here. <laughs> I think well, we're, we're the only people. I think the we're the, like the I only country left. I think we're only seeing it here because no. we have so many people actually using, using Blackberries. Blackberries. Okay. <laughs> Zing! <laughs> but anyways, now tell me. Come on. All right. So MTN. Um, news <laughs> that broke this week, um, and to toot our own horn a little bit from us, was, um, <laughs> that, Thanks, that, that, was that, they were, that they were looking at smartphone packages, and they were toting it as, as something like BIS. And we're like, when they told this to us, and we, and we ran the story, we like, flat rated. Ooh, flat rated internet. This could be interesting. Because MTN have already been Very dabbling nice. with uncapped 3G products, right? Mm -hmm. Then, I think yesterday or the day before, they confirmed the details and it sucks. It was so <laughs> disappointing. It's basically their top end package is 50 Rand for 75 megs, exactly the same as their normal 50 Rand for 75 megs uh, package. And it only allows a limited number of things and then you're cut off anyway. And then it starts going to ad hoc billing. But they didn't tell us what the ad hoc price was yet. Um, we were thinking that it was going to be some sort of What's throttled the uncapped yeah. service. That, that point. Just, then. I think they just called it overcharge. Overcharge. They didn't, they, they didn't say how much it's going to be, what it applies to. Eh. Why? Oh, that's a waste. To take your yeah. money, that's why. Okay, moving <laughs> along. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was waiting for and, this exciting. Exactly. Was, exactly. I mean, dude, we were so excited when this news broke. We're like, yes, yes, yes. And then the comment came back from, and like literally everybody in the office was like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, it, it, was, it was very, however, I mean, I'm very disappointed now, but people should note this product has not been launched. We do not have all the details. MTN might even be using us to gauge reaction for all we know. Okay. okay? okay. Um, so... Uh, this wouldn't be the first time that an industry player has used the significant resources at my broadband's disposal. <laughs> um, you know, but basically playing us. To make us, a business decision. Basically playing us. But it's for the good of all. <laughs> so that's fine. I mean, if you want to see what industry reaction is going to be to your crap product before launching it, no better way. Please feed us a story. <laughs> uh, so a good and then see how the pharmites tear it apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so... Um, piece by piece. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so uh, an interesting thing that the mixer came across is Circuit Playground. Now, this is interesting because Gareth showed us an app earlier that, <laughs> that competes nicely. So, um, and, and the comment was, uh, you know, th this is so cool because what it does is it lets you calculate the resistance using the colors on the resistor in an app, but it's on iPhone. I wish I had this when I was studying for crying out loud, because uh, manually working that stuff out is not fun. Yeah, and, I, and I'm colorblind. Can we use the so. camera to take a photo of the resistor? I, I would love that. I don't think the cameras on phones are good enough yet. You're right. Dude, to eight, pick up. Eight megapixels. Okay, megapixels. Yeah, those megapixels. resistors are only like yes. a centimeter wide. Exactly. Yeah. They're <laughs> tiny. Those bands are even tinier. 
you'll have to zoom in quite a bit. But, and and you, you have, have to, to know which color. side. Yeah, you have to know which side is the marking side for which way you're going to count the color. So okay, man, don't take a photo. Just <laughs> come down on my parade, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So is that uh, is that a free app? No, it is three dollars. Three dollars. <laughs> okay, on Android, I'd like to point out uh, <laughs> there is an app called Electro Droid. It is free. And it'll do resistors, SMDs, inductors, Ohm's law, pretty much everything you want to do. Can it work out the triple five timer for me? I think okay, that I think. Uh, is isn't that like a black art? That's I, I, what I'm saying. If they that, have done the black art for all you, triple five timer stuff is built from spec. I look at the, <laughs> the circuit diagram and I build. No, it it's to that the kind diagram. of thing that you work out once, and then you go and save that calculation. <laughs> So, so right. yes, on Android there is one. It is free. It is ad supported, but it's just like a little ad in the bottom. You don't even notice it. Cool. So another interesting thing that came out is uh, I think first I'm going to notice. Uh, first I'm going to mention because uh, we all love piracy. Um, I'm talking about the kind Yarr. that involves copy creative commas, copyright infringement, and not uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> and, not high seas and piracy. Not high seas piracy. Oh. All oh, right. Sad. So now what's interesting is the Pirate Bay um, got in the news recently again. Uh, well, firstly because their their founders were sentenced to prison time, and secondly because they are talking about real world piracy now. <laughs> so they want they they're putting up spec for 3D printers to use oh, on, yes. on their site on, for, for, for torrenters to download. Now, there's an interesting little device uh, that's been launched called, uh, by Roland called the iModella Miniature Hobby 3D Milling Machine. Wait, you're saying that, you see, slow down. Okay, let's say it again. Roland's new iModella Miniature Hobby 3D Milling Machine. And it's cute and it's awesome. So you're not going to be building a. You're it not looks gonna, like a custard machine. I, 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 I know. I know. Pirates often say, you know, like you know these ads that are like you wouldn't steal a car, and and pirates often chime up and said, no, but I download one. Um, <laughs> you're not going to be downloading a car <laughs> from from this little device, but it's it's really cute because um, hey, hey, you could do it one part at a time. <laughs> and, it, and it mills it for you. So you can take soft materials such as resins, metals, and carbons are not supported. Um, it measures roughly 20 by 20 by 20 centimeters, weighs in at 1.7 kilos, and you can make your own little cutesy toys and whatever else. It's cute and small. I can and churn make. out mini droids. And, and I want it's one. resin, dude. You can build your own little Warhammer figurines if you want Ooh, to. And resin is, well, resin now, is notoriously hard to stick. Yeah, I guess. Hold but but if you make the whole thing, you don't have to stick. Yeah, if you don't it's have to one glue solid part. Yeah. So that um, could work. doesn't that bring into question and then uh, on sorry, the like how is the Pirate rights Bay linked to this? How, how, sorry, just give me that. Link okay, so, so so Pirate Bay offers yeah. torrents for CAD documents to be downloaded, yes. which you can then feed into software, which then makes you little which which prints little three D things for you. So I, I need to buy my own three D printer. Get yourself one of these. How much? Nine hundred dollars. <laughs> That's too Next damn month. freaking. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Luke, mm. sorry, we interrupted you there rudely. Um, I don't know if you remember what you wanted to say. Um, uh, probably about like rights holders. I mean, like you just said, you're going to make Warhammer figurines. Uh, aren't they going to want a cut of that action? Well, <laughs> no. What you could do with Warhammer figurines is it could be a Creative Commons spec. It doesn't have to be the official okay, one. Yeah. So you can use your own, and then just call them modded or. You know, this your, isn't your really a marine. No, 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 no. This it, is you can use it as a marine. Okay, it just okay, has okay. to represent all the things that the thing on the table is going to use. Okay, sweet. But it doesn't have to be the official models. The official models are basically just easy to put together and easy to get. But you can always and, and you you can't be asked to go and buy. You can't buy singles. Yeah, you I have see. To buy like if on those. someone makes a spec for it, sure. It just actually goes through these. It's going to be hard to paint the thing then and then put it on. But three yeah. scanners that's yeah. also not not uh, that you know not that far fetched they exist. And also so I'm fairly sure the limited edition ones are usually a metal of sorts. Uh, not a resin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well you won't be able to print it with this. But there are other things which print metal. So yeah. They okay. would be more expensive. Sorry, no, they print plastics. Are we at printing metals yet? I don't think so. Mm, not yeah, yet. Yeah. This, yeah, is yeah. This, is this is milling, but for the use in 3D printing, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Well, Sorry, the mixer was just uh, was just correcting me. So, <laughs> so that you can um, take your own raw materials and feed it into the 3D printer. Cool. So we've got two more topics to go. I'm not going to spend that much on the next one because I'd like to go to our cool one at the end. Basically, um, Google has launched a project 
uh, called We Solve for X, or at least launch the website. Here it is. And it's basically a uh, like a TEDx type thing. They've got videos and stuff on there. There's some speculation that it's uh, linked to Google's, um, what do they call it, Top Secret X Lab pro project, which is basically where they come up with you know, all kinds of newfangled projects. Mm. So go check that out, we solve for x.com. Some cool videos on there. Business Insider article gives you the whole rundown on uh, how New York Times uh, sort of took the lid off this this uh, X Labs, which apparently not even all the Googlers knew about. There were <laughs> people, sounds about right. people in Google who didn't know about this top secret project. And so the theory is that this We Solve for X is like an inside look at the, the X Lab. Next thing I really wanted to talk about is becoming a cyborg. Uh, yes. Right. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so this is pretty sweet. Yeah, so yeah. Luke, you actually, you actually. Um, oh, I just found this incidentally this. today. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna post the design taxi link. This actually comes from a different website. Um, the guys are. Um, I'll go look at my Twitter now. Yeah. Sorry. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move it along now. Uh, take it away, Luke. What's it about? Okay. So what these guys have done is instead of using things like, um, I've forgotten the word now. Um, pacemakers. Pacemakers. Yeah. Um, they decided. Well, there's 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 no reason why you you have to have a set pace in your body. Why not just take a you know kind of like a motor or a <sighs> that kind of thing and just run. So you've got now people that are clinically or theoretically dead because they have no pulse that are alive uh, because they run off of pumped blood. Fear this the stew dad that you you see. Oh, that is, that is awesome. So yeah, They're making vampires. Well, they, they don't have a heartbeat, so yeah. I'm sure you can still feel a, a pulse down here. No, because because it doesn't have any kind of beating action, or it's not trying to simulate a human heart. Oh, so it's constant flow. It's constant flow. It's called a pulse for a reason. Yeah. Wait. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so they've replaced the heart with flowing. Blood. And and according to this video, so it's, it's just, just like a pump. Heart. It's just like a normal, ordinary pump to circulate blood what, through. What goes in? Like your, a like a pool, like yeah. a pool pump. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so a constant flow. To do this? If no, this was used in a heart op, the guy's heart was yes. was was seizing up. He had some wicked cool heart disease, and yeah, so instead of putting a pig heart in him. Instead of something. putting a pig heart in or a pacemaker, they decided to go with this newfangled tech of theirs. So, wonder how much they paid the guy. He's gonna die it was the last <laughs> resort. They said, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, sign He's the papers, off you go. Yeah, yeah. And so... Oh, and it was. He's still fine. What they said was remarkable about this was the next day he was up, he was on his PC, he won journals, he was going yes. like a boat. So far, they're not really seeing any kind of ill no. effect between the, the, having the, your, your blood pulse the, and having your blood flow. Not just flow. No bad side effects. The only thing that the docs find creepy is that, well, now traditional machines that we have for measuring, like, heart rate... Don't apply. <laughs> they have they no way the guys are clinically dead yeah, because they, they don't have a heartbeat. They, they have no have way to pulse. verify that no. he's alive short of brain dead. Well, like this they can hear the motor them. humming. That's it. That's all they can hear. Well, they, they can feel a, They can probably check a blood pressure. Yeah, they can do that. Okay. But, that's but you still it. have to go and then dig in people with needles and things, and that's creepy. <laughs> so it should be noted that this amazing discovery, because there are going to be uh, animal geeks and stuff out there and th that might want to know this, that this, that this amazing uh, development comes at the cost of massive animal experimentation. So yeah. they, they tested on a lot of cows, um, taking, taking out the heart of a cow and replacing it with pumps and the, the cows going along. And um, they did Steak. that with a lot of cows before they tried it on a human. Um, they give the exact number in the steak. <laughs> they eventually became steak. I'm yeah. sure of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's the, technically not wasted cow, at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure if the cow died, I'd they like would have to just know some specs around this motor. I mean, how many? <laughs> how strong is it? The thing is, the Arctic is a bit um, scant on details, but yeah, I, yeah. I would also love to see how this works because surely something like that consumes a lot of power. How do you keep it going without having well, an yeah. invasive no, no, battery no, pack? The first thing you need to know is how, what, how many, what, what's the measuring for pump? Uh, how yeah, many pressure and how many PIs does it need to pump at or keep yeah, that exactly. flow at? Then you'll know how much power. But I, I guess you would know that already. You you could get an average figure from people that you know are alive, like you and I, <laughs> as to how you know how our average um, pressure. I would say, yes. and then you could go from there. So it's, you could just simulate that. Creepy. 
Indeed. How Indeed. would you know if it's enough, though? That's my only thought. Do you? What, uh, what does then light happiness mean? What, what does I, I, mean? I guess you wouldn't have it anymore. Your pressure is falling. Or, yes, it's, Maybe you, after you've done some exercise, you'd have to go and tweak the motors so that your blood pumps a little faster, so that you have the same blood flow or more get oxygen more oxygen to, to, your, to, to your extremities. Yeah, maybe, maybe the, look, this guy that the operator on was pretty old. So maybe those are side effects. That's going to be interesting for me to, to dig around. And, and I've dug around and there hasn't really been a lot more information on this, but can he still participate in strenuous activity? Can he do bungee jumping? Because well, I guess at the end of the day, the point is that he was fine. He was still able to do normal, normal stuff. Normal stuff, yeah. yes. Yes, big yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He probably won't be running the 100 meters. Redefining the pulse, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's, just it's, amazing. A, it's amazing. It is indeed amazing. Cool, and as if that wasn't cool enough, um, I'm going to go into our kicker to end the show off with. And I think I'm going to go with, um, I mean, let's go with both. Why not? So first one is the one inch tall coffee maker that brews the perfect cup. It's this big. And how? Much, <laughs> how? <laughs> how much coffee does it actually brew? N A cup. No, 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 not, not at all. Um, it, if you want a cup, you, you're going to have to do it like 25 times. Aww. Aww. So then what's the point? It's a jeweler <laughs> trying to prove a point. It's okay. a little espresso machine. <laughs> it's bigger than a coffee, uh, smaller than a coffee bean. It's basically. cute with the light. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's cute. Um, and then a video for everybody to go check out is OK Go's new video of a song I think it's done before. Oh, come on, but all of getting. their videos are cool. This one, they take a car. The whole thing was sponsored by Chevrolet, apparently. Okay. They take a thousand instruments, which was also sponsored by another company, and they put it on a rally track in the middle of the desert. And then they drive around in the car, and it's got extendable pneumatic army things, and they play the whole song with the car. Very nice. Driving along. Driving along. Mm. Th they actually took the lead singer. What? He went for stunt driving lessons. And they shot the whole video this way. These guys have the best job. The OK yeah, Go. Just go and watch one, one of their bands. videos. They, they, they start so innocuously, and they just get better and better and better. It's brilliant. And they got paid for this. It's what they do. I'm, I'm more interested now in the videos more than I'm interested in the music. How weird is that? <laughs> cool. I think that's it. That brings us to the end of the show. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for joining us. Um, Luke, where can people reach you? I am on uh, G+. Plus. You can look for me there, uh, Luke Potkiter. Elsewise, I'm on Twitter a lot of the time at Frick Yeah. So that's F-R-K Yeah. And that's me. Cool. Got it. I'm also on Google+. Plus. Gerrit Vermeulen. Uh, you can also check me on Twitter at Hawkeys ZA. Cool. Thank you very much. Johan. I've got ma I'm married and I've got kids. So if you want to follow <laughs> me on Google+, Plus, go for it. Um, Johan Els. Uh, otherwise, just follow my blog, blog.who-els.co.za. Cool. Uh, you say that you're not that active on Twitter anymore, so it's Google yeah. Plus bust. Google Plus or, yeah, oh, don't reach me. Oh, a Google man. Email! Right. <laughs> <laughs> or email. I'm, uh, I'm Jan Vermeulen. You can get me Jan VZA on Twitter. Uh, you, can get, you can circle me, Jan Vermeulen, on G+. Plus. Um, I'm also on Facebook, but who checks that nowadays? And I write for my broadband. My broadband on T.O.Z.A. forward slash news, forward slash author, forward slash Jan dash Vermeulen. Enter. I'm we'll surprised he can remember that. He's <laughs> also the staff writer. <laughs> His the, shirt says so. Not the only staff writer. Yeah. <laughs> I am the staff writer. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out our other shows. We've got Let's Talk Possibilities every other Monday night. We've got Let's Talk Sports. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Uh, Let's Talk Geek one is Wednesday. Let's on Talk Geek Wednesday. is on Wednesdays. LT Afrikaans on Thursdays, but not this week. So we'll be starting up again next week. And on Fridays, we have a new show. They'll be doing their third episode this week. It's Let's Talk Music. Yes, it's and you and Tim mix that. Yeah, I'll be mixing this week, uh, seeing as Tim's away. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's No, wait, it's not pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. So come tune in, see what we're doing. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, checking out the have local music scene and yeah, all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, checking out the local Calling music scene. Calling people live on air. Last, last <laughs> week, yeah, yeah. Last week they were calling night, people so live on air. The we actually, they, they brought in uh, a local uh, music group, a couple of artists. Um, so that's happening as well, which is, I think, pretty but damn awesome. But do they jam? They don't jam in studio, oh. but we did play some of their songs. Sweet. And those songs were pretty awesome. Okay. Yep. Cool. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week. See you next week.
Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 80, and your screen just died. <laughs> <laughs> Gods are no more! <laughs> so going in the looper. <laughs> focus, focus, focus. Uh, this is as good as the focus gates, I think. Doing an audio check. <laughs> Hello, this is the intro. <laughs> Stop being a retard. <laughs> Say when! <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> 